Well, there's blood all over me. Did I get hit? Oh, did I get hit? Did I get hit? Oh, I got hit. Okay. I remembered to pull the Michael audio out. Yo, check it out. Cameraman never dies. I'm fine. So as many of you may have heard, recently I got shot in Chicago while working for this fool. Sorry about that. Uh, and many people have reached out asking if there's going to be a GoFundMe or some way that they could donate or support. And I think the best way or something that would mean a lot more to me uh, is if you guys could help me get this channel monetized uh, by watching the rest of this video and um, getting those watch hours up. Matt's been doing YouTube since before I even started my channel. Watch What's the a, car sounds video on this channel. Yeah, there you go. I was, <laughs> there's been, I turned comments off on that. <laughs> and when I first brought up the idea of starting my channel, he was like the biggest advocate of like, bro, you should do that. You should do that. You should do that. Let's film. I've done it for a long time. Um, and it would be really cool if you guys would uh, stick around and just help me get to where maybe I could make it, make a dream come true, you know? So, but, but yeah, we're going to give them what they want in the beginning of this episode. And then we'll get into uh, some of the adventures we've gone into, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure a lot of people are coming over from the Chicago situation. That's where the majority of people are coming for. But, uh, and a lot of people are asking, I guess, kind of what it's like to get shot what your thoughts are or what my thoughts are what i'll tell you i didn't all they got was your immediate reaction yeah so this that was crazy <laughs> i because you know I, I didn't hear that in real time i saw that in the footage afterward and After. not for a while too because obviously that yeah. was like that shook us for a while to where we didn't even go over the footage for a while but then that's like, was dramatic i mean we didn't look at the footage for how long i mean i didn't watch it until like a week ago yeah like six seven weeks we didn't even look at the footage like the last thing on my mind that i saw it blowing up on uh the internet was like i gotta get the video out i was mostly thinking like i don't know it's this, just uh, like what, what was going through your head i'm mostly thinking like this was just terrible we got the squad running out i don't know this. no it was yeah I, i'm hoping that uh more people don't get killed i'm hoping that there isn't like a you know, p police sh shit, like... Yeah, I just... I wanted... that. Yeah, I guess my initial reaction and the first thing I thought about was, like, how long is this gonna... How long is this gonna be? Yeah, is this gonna carry on? How Am I gonna be in the hospital for days? Is this gonna be... I have to talk to a thousand different people? I've gotta... I've gotta come back out to Chicago? Follow up? We didn't or... know if the bullet was gonna get infected? You had... A, he just got the fragment removed. Yeah, so I, I didn't know if I had an infection. I didn't know... I couldn't fly home, so, like, my whole family had to... Uh, my family packed up and flew out. The doctors told me I couldn't get on a flight to get home, and we were far away. So my whole family flew out. I ended up being in the hospital uh, for, like... Up until, like, 6 p.m. So it happened, like... 2 30 a.m and then i was in the bed they rushed me out of that bed i had blood all over me in the cafe of the uh they were like you can just sit in the cafeteria and wait because i was like i don't have anywhere to go i don't know where i'm at yeah. and they were like all right so, so let's run it back from the top <laughs> what, what was it like for you walking outside of that studio what happened so i'll say uh, so i was actually turned the other way i had walked out first before everybody else or i was one of, one of the first two people out and i turned around to hold the door and then also like kind of talk to you guys as you had gotten out and there's like a in some of the pictures you guys could probably see like on the news reports there's like a large step it was like a foot step like a like a large enough one to where i was like guiding everybody out and turned around and then um i honestly my initial thoughts like we t we have talked about it off camera my initial thoughts were someone had thrown firecrackers at my feet I, I looked down and i saw an explosion and it was the best way i can describe it is firecrackers but very close to your head like very loud very that's where, continuous. Your, memory, that's where your memory picks up is just that door opening you walking out and then firecrackers firecrackers yeah and i didn't see anything there was a there's a moment where i uh so before all, this is all before recording there's actually a, a I, split second clip i, I was gonna say there is a clip of me i i recorded but i was i was spamming the button trying to get the camera to wake up and to start recording to i had there's the a one the shooting yeah while you can't you can hear a rumbling in the footage it's like it's like a, a quarter of a second clip we'll play it but in that, you can kind of hear a rumbling. You tried to actually record in the middle of the shooting as you were evading the gunfire, which is just crazy, bro. I mean, that's just, that's, I, that's crazy. I don't, I guess, I don't know. For Again, because it goes, I think it goes back to me wanting to be a YouTuber for so long. Like, I've always talked to a camera. I don't, I don't have a brother or anything. So I've always talked to a camera as if it's like a human being. And uh, so I guess that was like my way of, uh, like me recording immediately after was a way of, because I was alone, it was just a way of me being able to like talk to somebody, I guess. Yeah, and it's like, I'm the YouTuber and... I like come over and I don't say shit to the camera. <laughs> I'm just telling the cops I don't know anything. Like I wasn't even like in that headspace. So it's like definitely, a, I mean, you're crazy, but props to you for thinking to record and talk after being shot in your neck. I didn't even get shot and I wasn't thinking about talking to the camera. Or... The ambulance got there rather quick. Yeah, the, the ambulance got there quick. But yeah, so my memory is uh, we, we walk, we open the door, closes behind us. And then uh, it felt like literally there was like 
fire, like the brightest light. Like it felt like the sun was in my eyes and just like, <laughs> like, like literally like five, six seconds. It felt like, to me, it felt like an eternity, but five or six, seven seconds of, of full on sweat. I think the, Bro. the, that shit was crazy. Yeah. It was just shocking. We were, we were at that point, uh, having probably the best time in the night and were, or the vibe was Yeah, things good. were finally picking up. The we were finally good. feeling good. We it were... was like the best time in the trip. We had been there for multiple days and it was like the best time in the trip was right before we exited the recording studio. Which yeah, is really they always ironic. say it's the calm before the storm so or whatever. Our, our, and like, at least from my perspective, my guard was down. Our guard was completely down, and that's when it always happens. It was yeah. 3 a.m. We knew we were in like what was supposed to be a, a decent area, and we were going right to our car that was like right across, less the than 20 feet away from us. And then our plan was literally go home, hit the Airbnb in a nice area. It's a multiple bedroom, expensive Airbnb with like proper security as well, yeah. like, like a nice place. Ten person Airbnb. Yeah, huge. And and our like I guess the mindset was literally like it's crazy. And then something that wasn't talked about. Also, it, this is the sorry to interrupt you. This is the that was the least hood hood video ever. We're indoors the whole time. We went outside with with Vert for like 15 minutes. We weren't even in the hood. We weren't really trying to go above and beyond and fuck around. Yeah, because a lot of people, there's like a narrative that we're trying to get content and be involved in shootings and stuff like that. And that is very clearly, I guess we can talk about how for years, I didn't want to do any of the hood stuff. I was the original videographer, did the first couple episodes. I saw Acting Like I'm the Man, I got divorced on Valentine's Day. Those are all Matt, like... O OG ones, and that was those were great days with Paw Paw out on Valentine's Day in the freezing cold. But yeah, you never wanted to do any dangerous stuff. Like Matt didn't want to come to January 6th with me. He didn't want to go to the hood. Yeah, he offered me that anymore. morning. Do you want to come? To, to whatever yeah all of these trips were proposed to me and and for the longest time i said no but then yeah i guess it just like it's, it's really i that's why i have to apologize to you and i I'm, i've done it a thousand times but like i convinced you to trust me with your safety and then i put us in a, a blatantly unsafe situation it's a shitty situation, but you guys are helping me win by being here and, and checking out the video. So I really appreciate Trying you guys. Trying to make the most out of this. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and for anyone saying, Brandon, you're, you're an idiot or a dumbass, uh, yeah, yeah, we shouldn't have been. We uh, are. I, I take accountability too, because again, I've told him I'm a grown man. I knew what, I know Chicago's dangerous. I didn't, I had to give. It's not like I was forced onto a plane. I showed up to the airport. I was excited. It was a, it was a normal trip up until then, you know? Oh. I appreciate you guys watching this video. No, yeah, it means a lot. But I guess I can go back into... How did it feel, so just to get back to the uh, the incident? Yeah. Um, hopefully we're not rambling too much. I'll be able to edit it. People, I'll be able people, to edit hopefully it. people will like it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, what exactly did it feel like, the actually getting hit with the bullet? So as you can tell from like the initial the clip, I didn't even know that I had gotten hit. And the way that I had discovered I had gotten hit is there was... Uh, I should have brought the sweatshirt. Um, but the... My sleeves had blood. My initial thought, and you can see it all like happening in the clip, um, is that I didn't get hit because I didn't feel anything. So I didn't feel anything. No warm anything at all. It was just a, a huge adrenaline dump. Like the best way I could describe it is riding the most intense roller coaster you've ever ridden and then like accomplishing your biggest goal. Like, like your body just flushes with this overpowering, like, heartbeat all, all you could focus on is like how hard your heart is beating is but, but it's just like pure nothingness outside of that like i didn't feel i knew that i had fucked up my knee pretty bad because i had like tripped and fell uh but like that was all i had felt you because didn't feel the bullet. i didn't feel the bullet at all i didn't know that it had happened and the way that i discovered was by looking at my sleeves and seeing blood and then i was like uh, my initial thought right after that for a split second is whoever was next to me got hit and got hit bad enough to where it splattered on me wow that was what I was thinking immediately. And then I was like, "Did I?" that's why I keep asking, did I get hit? I'm covered in blood. Did I get hit? Because I didn't feel it still. And so at this point, I'm looking at my knees. I'm looking at my, my legs, looking at my hands. Is it my hands that's bleeding? Because there's a rock stuck in my hand from falling. And I was like, is that is it from that? And then, uh, I mean, you can hear it all on the, on the audio. Like what I'm, you can see me processing in real time. But it's like looking at my hands, looking at my knees. And then I was like, I guess the only other whatever. And then I saw kind of like a peripheral of my hoodie being down like this. And it, there was it was like dark red. So I was like, oh, it's up here. Did that hand covered in blood. And then I was like, OK. And then the initial thought was, I don't know. I guess it's like really cool that I think, honestly, I, I have a lot to thank for genuinely like video games and and movies. Really? For, for, I swear on my life because it, it my initial I went into an autopilot of pressure you can see in the video i'm i'm pressing as hard as i can right here to stop because i thought it hit my, like a big vein and i was gushing i mean bro right next to your carotid artery you that gets hit 
you're probably going to be bleeding out in a minute or two. Right. So once I saw blood on the hand, I said, okay, well, I'm not losing any more of that. Press as hard as I could. Somehow, someway at 2.30 in the morning, my phone's alive. Insane. That's God. And then apply pressure. I call the cops. Or, you know, 911 called the ambulance. It got here quick. And then they put me in the back of the ambulance. Off to uh, the hospital. And uh, just a fun fact. Uh, I, like, they wouldn't let me in the ambulance. And I did ask the cops i was like hey can you take me to the ambulance because i don't want to be here um because i wouldn't answer the police's questions about the the shooting they refused to take me anywhere um and i was just left on the scene alone and i had to get an uber and try to call an uber to uber me to the hospital <laughs> literally had to get an uber to the which hospital. i thought it's fucked up i mean i don't know i, I know people have uh, their, their opinions on me um not uh telling police the police information but um i still feel like they shouldn't be leaving me on the scene when we just got shot at 60 times. No, that's insane. And then also, like, being told that you weren't allowed to get in the ambulance sucked because it was like, I don't know. Again, it was my initial thoughts are just like, how long is this going to be? I'm in a place I've never been 10 hours away from home, 10 plus hours away from home. And I was like, damn, why can't he come? And they're like, we just don't. I guess with gunshot stuff, they don't know who the shooter is. So, yeah. My only complaint is I wanted to get out of that area and into a safe area after the shooting. But, you know, whatever. Chicago, Chicago PD, they have a, a, a rough job. And to anyone who feels some type of way about me not cooperating with police, uh, you know, I get it. I understand your perspective as well. Um, we just want to stop the cycle there. Oh, to just to understand my perspective, it's like, all right, so we, 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 we cooperate with police. And then uh, that's violating the code of ethics that is established in the streets. They're allowing me into their environment. So I feel like if I go against their code of ethics and that's going to be a horrible look, then we have to testify. Then who knows what's going to happen about if we get someone arrested, then maybe someone from their hood is going to want to come do something to us. It's like, we felt like our best option was just to not, not, uh, give the police any information and uh, go about our lives and hope that, you know, we don't get into another situation. And honestly, like almost not even drop it. It's not like it was something that we've been talking about since it happened. Like, we're going to drop this video. We got to get this video out. We, let's capitalize on, like, it's mainly just because of all of you guys. Yeah, everyone keeps, everyone's been asking about it. Yeah. The whole situation's fucked up. I don't want anyone to get arrested. I wish we didn't get shot. I don't want anyone to die. All of the gang violence and stuff is, uh, is bad and just a, a net negative. Like, these, I could be enjoying these rappers' uh, music and going to their hoods and doing these videos and without anyone dying. And uh, that would make me way happier and the videos would get just as many views. So it's like, uh, yeah, that's why I ask people, like, how do we stop gun violence and stuff? It's not an easy solution. It, these are, are many territorial gang wars going on. So you get to the hospital. What do the doctors tell you? I remember asking the, uh, so I, I did ask the people in the ambulance. I was like, you got to be straight up with me. Uh, you know, like, how bad is it on the way there? Like, you know, is it just like the general, like, am I going to die? Is it uh, whatever? And I remember her response being pretty hilarious. She said... Well, you're not gut. What she said, you're not squirting. Well, you're not squirting. That's that was good. that was her response to me. I said, and I was like, okay. The, so one, I, the one time it's good where you're not a squirter. Right? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but I, blood come in your yeah, I was like, you got to tell me straight up. Like, I do better with. I'd rather face it now than like have you know like what I just need to know. And she said, you're not squirting. That was her response. Nothing else. I was like, okay. Great news. Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, then we pretty much just got to the hospital. They did what they had to do, and then um... yeah, it was rather quick. Uh, they gave me Dilaudid. I've never been on any. I've never had surgeries of any kind of, or anything. So that was the first time I've been like on heavy painkillers. Some things hit, boy. Yeah, Dilaudid is insane because I didn't even. They told me that like it didn't hit anything, and I started doing crazy shit. I was going like. I was like, yeah, you're right. I think <laughs> I'm moving it all around and shit when it was resting up against my jaw. <laughs> But, uh, no, I mean, they was pretty quick. They shoved me out at like 12 PM and then I waited in the, in the cafe for six hours and just like talk to, uh, talk to Mustafa, one of our team members. We love Mustafa. Talk to talk friends to and family. Them. Yeah. yeah for a long time. All, this for also on a positive note was just a great reminder to be thankful. Like I'm always saying like, I'm, I'm glad to be alive now for sure. Cause we're uh, lucky that we're not dead. Yeah. I've been waking up every day thinking it, it changes your attitude and your, um, like, I feel like even anything that happens now, like minor inconveniences, it's like, who cares, dude? Like it could have been so much fucking worse. I could be paralyzed. I could, I, I could not be able to talk. I could, it could literally be anything other than what it is. And I think the worst that's happened is my beard is never going to grow back. <laughs> yeah. It took a long time for it to look this shitty and now it's, it's stuck. Like that. <laughs> yeah. That's just how it goes. But um, yeah, that's pretty much what it's like getting shot, right? 
Yeah, I mean, that covers most of the bases. Yeah. What else I, is there to say? Other than uh, you do, I think like a lot of the stuff you see again in movies and video games is real. Like you feel warm. I felt that. I said that in the in the raw footage that I, I feel warm and I cut myself off. I immediately had thoughts about like, uh, people are going to be so mad that like you hear that like, oh my God, she's if, if I die, she's going to kill me that joke like if i die my mom's gonna kill me or whatever uh and that definitely goes through your mind of like holy shit like if i if i don't make it through this then my people are gonna be pissed at me <laughs> and it's like the fact that that's where your mind is is crazy um other than that like you, you feel warm uh the adrenaline dumps crazy i still i'll be truthfully honest like to not try to milk it or anything there wasn't much pain throughout the whole thing even recovery um, I think the most pain I've been in is getting it removed. On that note, I think it will be good to uh, talk about some of the other wild stuff we've done. Because like I said, Matt's been filming with me since Jan since 2019 uh, music videos. But for the Buckingham Show stuff, uh, since the very first episode, January Since the conception. Since coming home from teaching in your teaching outfit. So we want to get him enough watch time to get monetized. So I think we should just make this longer and let's just talk about some of our... Uh, Word. Yeah, stick around. Let's do it. Right. So... Yeah, I guess we'll... watch this far. I mean, Christ, I don't know how it works. YouTube's still a confusing beast, bro. <laughs> Hope you guys watch this video. He got shot, for Christ's sake. Watch it. I don't know. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I don't know. No, yeah, so I guess one of the... Because I wrote them down. I well, left my phone inside, but I can think of... Uh... Well, let's start it off. It all started off... It Literally, we're in Carroll County right now. It started off at in our local... Uh... <laughs> shopping center yeah there's a local shopping center that had a uh, a massage parlor that typical massage parlor and this is a really small town like before recent developments it's gotten a little bit bigger but beforehand you could say there was like roughly literally 10 stoplights yeah so what was your take on that day that i first called you because you you'd recorded multiple music videos for me so what's what's right. your perspective on the day that i first called you and was like yo i want to do this funny video equip quit my job and start a youtube channel well yeah so i guess like a, you had that little thought of like I, i'm gonna quit my job and do the youtube channel but i don't think you fully felt that way until we finished that day until yeah. we had filmed, filmed yeah i think i just called you like do you want to do the video do you want to do you want to mess around and on a sunday it was a sunday i was i remember deadlifting at the gym and i called you in between sets because i had the idea and then you came from the <laughs> gym yeah i don't know but I, we i didn't even shower yeah, yeah you said because so i even have a um I i'll put I it finish my workout i didn't even finish my workout i don't know what happened something like just came into my head Divine intervention, man. Yeah. Your your job changed. That, that was a moment. weird day. It was it was fate, dude. It was definitely it's really cool though, because when you hit me up, my initial reaction was like, I'm all in. And that, he, he had all the equipment too. Yeah. In the beginning, Brandon did not have a camera or mics or anything. And like the spoon in the first video and the mic is like a cheap what is it, the purple panda? Yeah, I had like a, a Rebel T5. I didn't even have my GoPro at that point and I had no mics. So Matt had a, a lavalier mic. And I'm like, bro, I need like a thing. And so you... I brought a spoon, a wooden spoon, and we just kind of like free balled it. And it was, uh, and like I, I tried to be available for the next like three, you know, anytime you hit me up, like for the next week or so, like we, anytime you were available. You did the first edit on the first video. Like I, I, I was going to say, I, I have, I'll put that in a private playlist. I have a video called the funniest video I've ever made. And it's a 19 minute cut of my version of your video. Yeah. So obviously that, the, the one that's on my YouTube channel is the one that uh, I edited, but Matt helped me edit that video and he did the first edit of the first ever Buckingham show episode and like you said I don't I don't know if I'm uh, funny or entertaining I still don't feel like, like you know I'm not the most fucking like yeah uh, I'm the shit guy you know what I mean so your reaction being like this is so funny you're so funny this is the, like this is the funniest video I've ever made I remember I remember you calling it that vividly yeah and that was very like uplifting to me well, because I truly thought that I was on to something. I was like, there's never been something that has been like you were confident on camera in that video and it just all like clicked. I was like, dude, I have the equipment. You have the drive seemingly to do it. You're funny and you're willing to be on camera. That was like part of when I first started doing YouTube, I always did video game content stuff and never really showed my face. And then I slowly worked into being on camera, but like you were just from the jump, like ready to go. And I was like, oh, this is going to work. Like I just knew immediately. And then, like I said, I tried to be available for the next like every day that you want. I mean, days in a row, you were coming home from work and being like, let's try to do this. Or like, it was just any time you had available time, you were, we were running out and fucking there's videos that are never going to gonna come out but like the video yeah I, we could bleep the name but like there's a, there, lot, of there's a lot of really dumb stuff also that's, in the beginning uh m most of the time unpaid i was just down down for it dude and you weren't making money i wasn't making money I that was wasn't like what losing it, that wasn't right? what it was about and so you know i even got my friends tapped in on it like one of my childhood friends mike if he's watching this mike he helped you do the uh the Ni selling fake viagra at niagara yeah, shout out to Tra Mike. Traveled up for that, and 
He was on board too, and he was there for the first video too. Not to not to let that go unmentioned. He yeah, Mike filmed the pepper spray video and the pepper spray video. Yeah, he's done a lot too to help. And like, uh, it's funny because like going back that far, like back then we were just like it was a work relationship to where I literally brought him to make myself more comfortable because I was like I don't really know Brandon all that much. That's enough wild. to enough to go fuck with people in public. Like Mike, do you want to come with me and hold a second cam so that I feel more comfortable? And that was that was the basis of why he came. Yeah. And then after that, it was like, oh, dude, <laughs> like this is this is so sweet. So what are some of your uh, finest memories or wildest moments over the last uh, five years of filming? Because it is crazy to think about how far we've come. We came from doing these videos for he's doing them for free. I'm doing them at a loss. So now we I mean, we, we had a good year. We're both having a great year. Yeah. A fantastic, fun time. And, and the memories are worth so much more than anything you could ever pay me, dude. Like just going back on memories, there's stuff that, that hasn't been out to, to to you guys yet on the Brandon main channel, and it will come out soon. Part of it is me. I don't know if that's one of my videos I'm supposed to edit, but part of it could Machine be me. Gun Kelly? Oh, well, that one is a great one, too. Yeah, Machine Gun. I can talk about all of the you can talk about anything you want. Okay, so Machine Gun Kelly, we, I got to meet him. I'm actually a fan of him. I'll get roasted for that. That's cool. I don't care. I, I really am unapologetically into what I'm into, and I think MGK makes some cool stuff, and I like a lot of his music. So meeting him was cool. And, uh, he actually like showed us time of day too. Like he wasn't, he was a cool guy. He was, he was really cool. And like a nice guy. tried to, I mean, he has a ton of people trying to get his attention and screaming his name and stuff. So like any amount of time you give anybody, is pretty cool. And he gave us like a lot of time. That's I feel like time. he was pretty cool. So that was really fun. And like getting to see Utah, Utah forever is going to be one of the coolest places I've ever been. So like I say, it's beautiful. Kyler Vick is cool as hell. Yeah. I love Kyler Vick, man. Kyler has been, me and him have gone back and forth. Like the um, the juggler video that's coming out this year, Kyler's a main main component of the video, and or at least in the beginning of it, and and throughout. Uh, there's like an event in the middle there that that he's a main part of, and I think he's really cool. I stay in contact with him. Like I think a lot of the relationships too that I have formed from getting to work with you. Like I'm cool with. Uh, I would like to think I'm cool with Turkey Tom. You are. Yeah. Tom's fun. <laughs> and then uh, no, we but got a, we got a good group of friends like, yeah, like 50 and, and even friends. like ron band up like some of the people we meet when we're out there are, are really cool and i may i maintain contact like me and mont you guys have seen the steelers takeover video hopefully and if you haven't go check it out but uh getting to hang out with mont mont's a big redskins fan commanders fan so like going to, to football games with him without like it, it, we were both talking about it at the game like this is the first time i've been here without my parents it's cool and he was like yeah me too i don't think i've ever been here without my dad we got to watch the super bowl with wendigoon i watched yeah the super bowl at wendigoon's big ass house we got to uh bring Paw to mardi gras i went to I yeah i caught Paw, beads bro. at mardi gras i've got a bunch of cool momentum yeah i miss Paw too man people don't know much about that situation but yeah Pawpaw's in he he is in bad health he's hit his head and uh he's actually moved uh to texas He's moved away. I don't think I knew that. Yeah, Papa's moved away. So that makes more sense as to why I haven't seen. And him. I love Papa very much. He's an uh, amazing uh, grandpa, and I love him a lot. But yeah, we've had some great memories with him. It's crazy, like you know, we have uh, we've got to capture some great things. I'll be able to. I get to look back on with my grandpa. You know, Me thanks to you holding the camera and helping. Uh, yeah, no, I even have it tattooed for the people who know me in real life. It says uh, it's in Italian because English is a boring language. I, that's literally the only reason I'm not Italian, but it says memories in motion because I feel like videos are your memories, your memories out. Like, I think it's very important to record stuff and, and to, uh, even if it's like stupid, cause the stuff that you might think is stupid in the time being like those people might not be with you. And then, you know, having any amount of footage and how they laugh, how they smile and stuff like that is going to be valuable. So, all right. So the clouds were insane outside. So we had to switch settings, but, um, Matt for this video, cause uh, we're going to get Matt on a, a streak of uploading consistently yeah. and, you know, doing collabs. I'd like to be on your channel more. I would love it. Having people like Amon and uh, different people and, yeah, just trying to get you some extra... Cause es essentially push. just be an extra arm to, to you too, though. You know, I know that a lot, of, a lot of the content you guys see, I have some hand in it, uh, whether it be filming or sometimes editing, and more recently, uh, more so than ever. So if you're enjoying the content that's coming out on his end... Um, you know, some got, of, yeah, I mean, some of, some of it's coming from me. So if you guys want to see some somewhat of a similar vein of of uh, content, maybe not the same topics, but same sort of editing and that yeah. kind of stuff, or attempts at the same sort of editing, because you have a weird brain. You go, people don't know that you might have a team of editors, but you go through your own videos an unbelievable amount before they go out. Like, yeah, you, <laughs> I'm obsessive, but yeah, I'm not. I'm not uh, the most active on social media. So extra extra content here with Matt. But you made a docket of. Uh, of different um, wild moments that we've had together. Yeah. So we're, we're going to go through some of those. Uh, the first one on the list is um, 
being in Puerto Rico at three in the morning with all of our luggage in what they said was the most dangerous hood. Uh, was it Dobleta's hood? It was, yeah, it's Sabana Abajo. And like, I think oh, the week after we there left, was a, <laughs> a cop got like murdered there or just shot. Yeah, him. yeah. Somebody, somebody from the balcony was shooting at cops from there. They, mur- I think they got him. They got the cop. They killed him. That's insane. So, but we went there. We had gotten kind of like, um, we waited outside of his apartment for how many hours? Uh, way too long. I mean, from, I remember from 7 PM was the original time <laughs> that we were supposed to like head out there. And then we waited in the Airbnb for a little while. And then, um, it wound we, up we got, there. we, yeah, we got a, a, like a, an Uber, which hilariously enough, all of the Ubers, the entire trip were very confused at the locations we were trying to get dropped off. Yeah. Like, at. why are you guys going to the Casarillos? Are you sure you should be there? Yeah, like, you no no Like we had somebody translating there with us and they were trying to talk to him. Like these, this is not it. Like you guys don't want to be there. And he's like talking to him back. Like, no, like yeah. we're invited. They're expecting us. And I remember one of them didn't pull into the compound. We had to, we had to get out and walk. They refused. For as not crazy as that video ended up seeming on camera, that was one of the like scariest, sketchiest videos. And it, it, it ended up, because we were trying to get the interview with Dobleta so much, uh, that we were we had to get to the airport at like 5 in the morning. So we were at uh, his hood at 3 in the morning with all of our luggage. just My laptop, my, my all of my camera gear, all of his camera gear. I mean, with ABG Neil, we don't know anyone. We can't speak. Me, him, nor Neil, nor our other friend, Paul, could speak, speak any, any of the language. Yeah, any. so we're there as clear standouts, like pretty much the only white people around. For sure. And the, uh, you know, we don't even speak their language. And we're trying to communicate that like, yeah, like so-and-so up there, like wants to talk to us. And then it's not a regular hood. Also the Casarillos are militants. No, they, there's people with AK 47s that armed. have, they have walkie talkies and anybody that there's one entrance. It's the only way in and out. They have guards essentially. They're yeah. holding shit down. And, and the cops don't patrol there. Yeah. And, uh, and when they do, they got shot. So. <laughs> we're just there with all our shit for hours, bro. That was, it was so sketchy. What was going through your head? You're probably pissed. I, I was irritated. I was irritated. I also, so during that trip, I had broken my camera. So it, right when we first started the, oh, yeah. the, the very first clip, I noticed our audio was bugging out and I, and, and come to find out there's a very common problem with the a seven threes that if you unplug and plug in the audio jack a bunch over time, it blows out and that had eventually caught up to my camera. So the audio in the very first clip is fucked up. So then we're like, what? So if you notice in that video, Brandon's using the iPhone as the mic because that was the only... You recorded on a voice memo and then you you synced it in post. Yeah, that trip was cursed. It was a fucked up trip. Yeah, and then we had to wait for... We had to get the whole thing translated. You had Mustafa on that for months. We had to get multiple different translators and everyone was mad at the translations. So that shit sucked. But yeah, I'm happy we didn't get robbed in Puerto Rico. It could have been so bad. In Sabana Abajo at 3, 4 in the morning with all of our camera equipment and all of our luggage everything and for my whole side career too like and i'm not working with you it's all my only, equipment <laughs> and the, the the guy shout out slater he's like a guy that spoke speaks english uh he came out and like greeted us and welcomed us and then to be told that like the blip that didn't want to talk to us and that like after pretty, waiting for hours pretty much that we like not that we weren't welcome there but he doesn't want to talk to us and he doesn't fuck with us and we're in his hood and we're yeah we're literally like I don't know what, 50 yards away and looking at, we were looking at him on the balcony. He's yeah. standing there like a mob boss yeah. from a distance <laughs> where we can't talk to him, arms crossed, like up on his balcony and sending his little courier out to tell us that he doesn't fuck with us. Yeah. And we're just in his territory. Shout out to Blitha. They could have took all our shit. So shout out to them. They literally could have just, yeah, that could have been a, we should have probably been, probably been killed then. Yeah. Uh, or at least robbed of everything we owned. No, but they didn't do that. And that was a, a sketchy situation. And I'm happy we got out of there unscathed. Yeah. Uh, and shout out to them for you know what I mean, just being like yeah we don't want to we don't want to be interviewed get on I guess they just didn't know I was white and they found yeah out. that was the the situation was when they once they saw us from the balcony that we were two white guys but we I get it like uh, you know with some of this stuff I look like a cop kind of like with my mustache and shit you know what I mean if you know me you obviously know like like reject <laughs> like. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm doing too like I, I you know whatever whatever I'm not I won't say too much but. I, I don't I don't blame Dobleta for looking at me and being like, oh, this white guy with a mustache and a camera. Like, I actually don't want to do the interview. Yeah, but uh, it was we definitely got pushed around. I remember making a note of the time. It start we started trying to get into uh, Sabana Abajo at seven p.m. Yeah, and we left at like three or four in the morning. And we got in at like two, and then waited until to find out that oh, we're not getting the interview at three thirty four, and then our flights at five. But yeah, 
No, no bad blood towards any, any of those. Puerto, Puerto no, Rico for guys. sure not. We get it, and we appreciate you guys uh, letting us in and out um, unscathed. Unscathed, yeah. Thank you. Um, another crazy situation. We were on the way home from New York City. Yeah, on the way home from from New York City. Had we filmed the Sugar Hill video? I think this was either the Sugar Hill or this literally could have been Canada. This could have been the long trip back from Toronto. We drop off everybody at New York, and then me and you get on our way. Yeah, was that what it was? I think so. And okay. then we we I'm on Twitter. We're both just trying to stay awake. And we're driving home. It, it's a 10 plus hour trip and we had to make a stop in New York. So we stopped in New York. Yeah, we did this weird route. This horrible Toronto hell trip. But uh, And then I, I come at what, like 1.30 a.m. or so. I check Twitter and what's trending is ba- Baltimore Bridge down or something like that. Or FSK, yeah. something along the lines of... of the Francis Scott Key Bridge had collapsed and we were literally right along that route. At when it happened, like I mean, yeah. we we checked it and and we were on a map on Google Maps GPS seven seven minutes away or something from we just we were on a bridge slightly farther. There's multiple bridges across. Yeah, I forget what it is the the bridge directly north is the route we ended up deciding to take. Um, but you can imagine thirty minutes earlier, an hour earlier, or er, not having to stop in New York or anything going differently than it did bridge, being maybe. on that bridge or at least in the area. And we we had the thoughts of perhaps covering it. Should we go? But then I didn't know what to say or ask. I was like, because I didn't know people were dead or whatever. So I was like, I'm not like, what if like people just died in the water? And, and people like, did end up passing away. So I'm I'm happy yeah. that we did not. I just opted not to cover because it, it just felt like I didn't know the extent of the church. Tra- felt like tragedy. grabbing for clicks, but it, it, weird, it did yeah. feel really interesting that we were on the road, we were awake right there. next to it when it happened, and it was breaking news across the whole world. Yeah. So, but yeah, I was scared we were going to pull up on the scene and people were going to be like screaming and crying because someone we, drowned. It, in the it water. had just happened, so, so. we thought that it was, <laughs> was that like, there was going to be flames still and stuff like that. So we were like, maybe not. Yeah, I was. I don't want to go there, bro. Sounds because like I. Crazy. It was one of those things where I checked it and I was like, I don't believe that. And I checked Google and it was like nine minutes ago. All these people reporting on it, and I'm like. This is happened. This scary. this happened like right now. This happened. Yeah, that was a scary. That was a scary moment. And then I don't know how much I should. I will keep. I'll just say it. And then if I decide not to put it in, I decide not to put it in. But going back to getting to go to Utah on that fun trip or whatever, we made a friend, Nick Shirley. Yeah. And he came into town to cover some other stuff, and we had an open day, and it was during the the uh, cleanup efforts. For yeah, the like bridge. a week or two after the bridge had collapsed. Or it was a little. It was a little bit longer. It was like because I wouldn't have flown right after that, but it was like a month or two afterwards. Still too recent to be flying a drone nearby. But I had flown my drone over the. Uh, you know about this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Flew my drone over I think top. You're in the clear. I do think you're in the clear legally. I didn't. Yeah, I was gonna say I didn't get any fines or anything. So I guess I could talk about that. I deleted the footage, and I we were in it. We were in a restricted zone. I was flying a drone when they, could, they. I have it in my hand, and they're like, "Can you land that?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure." And then four or five cops come up berating us i got a call from the fbi the next couple of days and they were like what were you doing out there blah 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 but that video will never come out because you we deleted the footage we deleted all of it why by, were by they request. why were they so intense about that because it was an open uh it was still technically an open investigation and rescue mission so they were they didn't want anyone interfering with it it wasn't necessarily me doing what i did it was a no drone area and it, so if any drones come in into the area they were pissed about it so it wasn't that i did that's why i think i didn't get in any trouble is because my intentions were clear and i wasn't trying to fuck with their their recovery efforts it was mainly just this happened nearby this is crazy drone footage it's i, I was right next to the bridge like I, I took off over top of the bridge so governments don't fuck around with drones they don't but they also luckily don't like dji and dji isn't cooperating with their no drone like that's part of the reason why i got saved is because the app didn't tell me i couldn't do it it didn't stop me from doing it that's crazy so it didn't because it's if you're like in dc for instance it, it will say, say you are in an nfz no fly yeah. zone there is no way you're allowed to take off your thing like you're just not allowed there was no radio jam over top of the the bridge so i it allowed me yeah, to take off it. that's why i didn't get in any trouble they were like oh well yeah well, like we're working with dgi to get it added to our yeah. maps because like they're not cooperating they're a chinese company we're, we're, it, they don't even understand china <laughs> all right so you have in the docket here you have the worst guidance i've ever given that's the link to um me taking you and Baby Fifty out in Forest David. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that was a fun adventure. <laughs> Shout out to Baby Fifty. We love Baby Fifty. If you're not listening to his music, uh, go stream. Please that. go check out. Dude, but so spank his ass. Essentially, I wanted to go to Forest Haven, which was a uh, a really really deranged insane asylum, and yeah. I we went there and got chased off by security, so I no longer had uh, the route that I knew to take. I could no longer go that route, so I called Matt at like midnight. Yeah, I'm playing video games. He calls me and um, I had been to this place. Well, it had been a year since I had even been. And the only times I will say this, the only times I've ever been there are during the winter where there's no foliage. Everything's dead. And at daytime 
Yeah. Totally different game when you can see a hundred yards through the trees and see where you're headed to. Yeah, we went in the middle of summer. It was wet outside. It was like the most moisture Maryland has ever had, <laughs> ever. And then in pitch black and overgrown trees and everything, it was... What I, happened? How did we get so astray? Um, multiple... First off, the trek was harder when there's... So it took us a lot longer, but multiple times throughout, I kept taking lefts when it wasn't the pinpoint time to take a left. So we would take a left, go over that way a little bit, realize that we're not where we're supposed to be, go back to where we were, and then continue. So we did that like... It should have taken us realistically... I told you on video that it was about 15 minutes. Realistically, it's probably 30 to 35. It took over an hour. And it, it took us probably an hour, yeah, an hour and 15 mm -hmm. minutes or so to get all the way there. We were tripping and falling. The worst. Uh, each one of us fell at different times. Baby 50 got bugs in his mask. It was. It made for some of the... Uh, I would I would say this. Arguably speaking, I think uh, it made the video <laughs> way better. It made the video better, for yeah. sure. Uh, and I think it's also a testament to how cool Baby 50 is that he put up with that shit and wasn't just like, fuck you guys, <laughs> fuck this. I'm going the nearest road and calling an Uber. Yeah. Because that was, that sucked. I'm it, a woods guy. I, we are both, we both black, grew up, bro. yeah, in, couldn't in see a, shit. It's no. wet outside. There's like creeks. I keep tripping over. When I say it was the wettest it had ever been in Maryland, I can't, I don't know. I would love to be able to find what day in the, the weather the statistics dew, of the, it was rain, like 190% whatever. humidity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were off trail. We were totally off trail. It was bad. But, yeah. yeah. And, and good I, memory though. Fantastic memory. It was awful in the moment. There was multiple times too. That's like the only time I've ever been urban exploring where there was multiple times where I was like, am I going to get out of this? Are we stuck here? I literally have moments of like, are we going to just be fucking, how do we get out of this? Because <laughs> I'm not going back the way we came. <laughs> so how do we get out of this? So then here you have uh, our, uh, another crazy moment that we have written down <laughs> is the the time we had a sleepover in uh, in Kensington on, <laughs> on the floor. What a good way to put it, a sleepover in Kensington. We lost your car. Yeah. And... <laughs> Like Kensington got the best of me. I thought my car got towed. We, in all actuality, just forgot where we parked it. But it, Kensington got the best of me. Matt, I was sober and I could not find the car either. Yeah, Matt it was. It was. It. it was like two a.m., three a.m., uh, and I was like, "Dude, this is the problem." Is is that we we were meeting up with multiple parties to go get food, and we parked separately from everybody. Everybody parked in their own spot, just on street parking, and we had walked. A crazy route. A crazy route to where we were originally going to meet and they changed the meeting location. So then we started backtracking and I couldn't remember like we took a right and then a right and then a left or whatever. And we're just in city blocks. So I'm trying to make a map of it. But I didn't really – when we're trying to find it later on that night, I didn't remember that we had gone to a different spot first. So I'm yeah. following a path that we never even took. And you all know me. I didn't pay for parking. Like a G. So we just assumed. Anarchy. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm an idiot, dude. I should have just paid for parking. So, but we just assumed it's towed. That was what we came to the conclusion of. We had done a, a lap around the, like, the surrounding three blocks. We spent at least an hour. At least an hour. Walking three to five miles, maybe? Yeah, walk, walk. Like, we walked for so long. There's yeah. so much walking that takes place on a Brandon Buckingham shoot. My feet bled well, in, that, in not, New York. Not to mention we had already been in Kensington at that point for like seven hours. Yeah. You know I mean, so we're like, we're tired and stuff. But so then uh, we couldn't find the car. I thought it was towed. Ended up just going back to downtown Kensington, filming more. And then going <laughs> to somebody's house and we slept on the hardwood floor. Uh, they didn't even have a TV like stand for the TV. It's just cor catty cornered against the wall there. Yeah, good people though, definitely good. Fantastic people, people, but waking up in that scenario was the most confused and and I wouldn't say scared, but like, what the fuck is happening? There's people screaming. It was a school day. Yeah, well, I got there and I was like so just going. I just threw up. I just Kendrick like, cooked. I just puked a bunch and then I laid on the ground. And then uh, somebody was talking about having a girl over and like banging a girl on the couch, and then and just pretend to be asleep. And I was like, "What the fuck? Don't do that." And they're like, "Just go to bed. <laughs> like, just go to bed." And meanwhile, I'm not fucked up. I'm you're, tired, yeah, but I'm like, like, like no. I don't want to be here, bro. Like, you're like, no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> don't ever. But luckily, it didn't happen. They didn't, they didn't come. A girl didn't come over. Uh, but then we woke up at like 8 a.m., 7 a.m. to uh, 
a, a, a very nice. She was very nice, but it's alarming and scary. Stomping like she was like stomping around and like yelling. It was she hardwood was floors, so they were loud. Yeah, she's she running angry late. About There's like an I want to say an eight year old fucking child running around. They have to get to school or get to work or something. And she's like, like, what the fuck are these people doing stomping around? And people are staring at us like, who are these two strangers on our floor right now? Yeah. With that, with that, uh, I woke up so scared. Like I woke up like, what the fuck? And then she was like. Uh, oh, you good, baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you good, baby. It's not you. I'm not mad at you. Because she's yelling at the person's house that we're staying at. Like, yeah. yelling at them yeah, for well, whatever. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, you oh, good, baby. It's yeah. not you. I was so out of it. And then uh, we just Ubered back to where we had ate and found and our found, car. Found the car almost called instantly. all the towing lots and there was the car wasn't there. Yeah, we called the towing lots and they're like, we don't have it. And we're like, all right, well, maybe we just whatever. And we, when we got back there, it was like now that it was not, like – daytime and the day had passed or whatever it's like oh okay wait i think it's down here and then we we found it pretty quick and that was a wild day that was our first day meeting skrilla that was our first day meeting uh ybc duel first day meeting a lot of people um my initial it's funny because like obviously we came to work with duel over a couple times or whatever like it wasn't the one time but when i didn't know who he was and when he first met me he came from where you are i'm filming over here and he grabbed my camera on the gimbal and like forced the motors over to him. And I was like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> like, and he's like, it's Mr. Disrespectful. It's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, he's like, and I was like, okay, I guess that's his that thing so or whatever. Funny. But like he – I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Don't touch the camera. Uh, but No, but he was he, he was cool though. Like, no, he was like, fine after. Like, I just didn't understand what was going on. Hot. Yeah, the way he came in, I was like, he what? <laughs> yeah. For sure. I love that though. Um. So so then after all of that, we, we – after the shoot, I was like, "This is the most insane video ever." Like, we got the craziest footage oh ever. Oh my god! And I, I'm I'm rarely like blindly optimistic. Like, you know, I'm, I'm typically very, you are like, I hope, or like we didn't get enough, or like uh, I hope it does good, or like I'll see what I can do in the edit. This well, video, I was like, "This is the best video we ever filmed, if not the best, one of the best." I go to edit it like the day after or two days after, which I never do. I always release stuff way later. But I go to edit it right after. Seventy five percent of the footage is gone. And we still to this day we paid over three hundred dollars to try to like mine the SD card and and do this that the other and there was like a brief moment where we talked about because you we had like a miscommunication where we we're like did you delete any of the clips and I was like yeah like sometimes when we're recording like I'll go to record and the settings are fucked up and I'll stop and then delete that little trash clip and you're like, like a short little did clip. did you delete it and I was like no 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 I would have never deleted that or whatever and then it just comes to it was some whatever threshold the gigabytes were like at fifteen gigabytes and above it deleted it it was like any clip over like. 10 or 20 10 like any yeah crazy. like so all of the best there's like a clip of this oh. like it sucks to even like think about it. it's like morbid and sad but like this 13 year old that was out there with like white stuff all over his face and then you asked him like either what, what his is, dream was what or like what it, for the future and he just was like to get high or something what do you say like just yeah. be out here get high yeah and it was like dude but like there's footage that you can't re can't replace it like you can't but we went back our our dumb asses went right back to kensington we had to go back yeah but it turned out just as good. And we got to find out about the religion and stuff like that, too. Like, there was other great footage that happened in lieu of that. But it would have been great if we went back twice and had a ton of footage. But we literally lost. And I will, I'll take blame for it, even though we still don't know what no, the fuck happened. Fault, yeah, right. I don't even know. It was – well, I'll tell you what. It was shitty equipment. We were using cheap SD cards. Yeah, what I think happened is our – I mean, the SD card was probably like a $200 or $200 SD card, right? I mean, it was like a – No, the one we were using, unfortunately, was a V30 little extra. It was like a $20 card. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, so yeah. we were, we were filming at too high of a bit rate or, or something, and the, the file was too big, and it just didn't write to the card or, or something. I don't know. Wait, that – you literally just unlocked that. This might not even go in the video. You literally just solved it. I guarantee you what happened is it's a v30 card and i was recording in in too high of a bit rate yeah no that's what i found online so then we got better sd uh we got type a s fast sd cards i'm sure everyone's got a thousand dollar metal yeah, metal thousand dollar terabyte sony tough cards um, because in all of our in all of our my days filming, i've never lost footage and it's crazy that that the 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 time we film that's like the best ever footage is lost but uh Still turned out to be an epic video. We, we made it. We made no, it. it ended up being fantastic. <clears throat> What's your perspective as like the camera guy? You know, because you know me, I go into places just like um, pretty optimistically, like let's go do it. Like we're just gonna gonna go get the video done. Like let's make it happen. Like I, I'm never too like worried or nervous or scared. What's your perspective? Kensington. So my experience with Kensington prior to that was uh, my girlfriend went to college in uh, nearby Philly, and I had gone she her whole family is from the area and they know to stay away from kensington kensington is a no-go zone and while taking her on a date night uh in philly like i traveled up while she was in college and we went on a little date and it was uh 
I didn't check where the, the maps was leading us. And we like at a certain point got to a stoplight and I'm looking around. I'm like, where the fuck are we right now? Mm-hmm. And I was on KNA. I was at the, the, the fucking the main KNA. And so that was the only experience I'd ever had with it before was being on the way to like dressed up looking night and feeling horrible about it because I was like, why am I going to spend a hundred dollars on dinner right now while these people are like, so I, you know, that going into a lot of these shoots, me, I'm very empathetic with like, I, like I gave my number out to a bunch of people in the opioid Baltimore thing, like saying I'd come back and I didn't, which makes me feel bad, but yeah. they never hit me up either. So, but I guess it's cause they don't really have access to phones, but I gave my number out to a bunch of like opioid addicts and stuff, just saying like if you, if there's anything I can do to help, like I would, because like, it makes me really sad to see like the homeless video in DC, very sad. Yeah, but like overall, like I think it's I think what you do is extremely important because like the, even if you even if our mainstream media wasn't the way it was and they cover things in a better way, they still wouldn't be doing what you're doing. You're the way you get involved, like because I bet I know the process of it. I've been with you doing it. It's like to go find like we weren't just at one encampment park in DC, like we spent the whole day, like going under underpasses and like asking people, like we don't show up with the camera in our hands, like pointed at them. Do we like, put a report first? Yeah. You talk to well, them. You, and, like, I mean, like, do you get, uh, like nervous or, or scared going to some of these places? Um, I think in the very beginning, yeah, definitely. Like Puerto Rico, I was definitely sketched about. Yeah, before that, I was too. Yeah, Puerto Rico, I wasn't. I think you not having confidence on that, and also our <laughs> inf- our <laughs> info was a hundred percent wrong. You told me that there was that s- s- somebody was that we were with. I can say it, Neil. That you thought that Neil was Puerto Rican. Yeah, literally. And, and that. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> So we go down under the under the guys that Neil knows what the fuck's going on. Neil's from New York and is not Puerto Rican. Neil can't even speak Spanish, right? So that's where we that that was definitely one of those like not confidence inspiring. Uh, like, well, I hope I hope it all goes well. Guess <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. none of our info is correct, but for the most part, I think you do a really good job at, at give, giving me the info ahead of time and like before you even accept the trip. You know, if you're like, hey, I think it would work on Tuesday. They're down on Tuesday. These are these people. Yeah, what, what do you yeah. think? So it's not just like a hey, yeah. this is where we're going. Buckle up. Yeah, we knew, and we knew Chicago was going to be a bit, a bit of a crazy one. Like, a a I, even when you broke, when you told me, I, I think my initial reaction was like, "Fucking Chicago, man!" Like crossing the big one off because that was the one that I hadn't been to. Before. Well, and last time I'd been to Chicago to do the O Block video, uh, we got shot at. Yeah, Joe, um, Chicago sucks, bro. That getting shot at so fucking sucks. But yeah, so some people might not know. Uh, where me and Matt are from has a really, really bad uh, opioid issue. Yeah. So a lot of people that we uh, love, friends, uh, various people who are close to us, have struggled with drug addiction uh, really bad, many of which have passed away. So uh, when we're going into these like situations, like Kensington, for instance, or just anywhere where people are struggling, we're not uh, like looking down on them like we... Like you said, we empathize with them because we. Say, they, I see, I see them. Yeah, I was gonna say I see them as somebody that it's like, damn, like I can see somebody that I really care about, and that I've seen them yeah. in, in a similar situation. And maybe not as bad because they have like a good supporting cast around them, and they didn't get to to fall all the way to the streets. But like, if they didn't have the people in their life, they would be exactly where those people are. And yeah. the, like some of the homeless people told us, it's what, what did the one guy say? Like you're one bad decision and one paycheck away. Yeah, a paycheck or two away from being homeless, like yeah. most of America is. But uh, yeah, I mean, we we know so many people who have just been in such fucked up situations. It's like it's bad. It's really bad around here. We don't have there's to get just into not too a many lot. To, there's just not a lot to do. So dozens a lot of and people. dozens of, of deaths. Yeah. Young people, teenagers, tons young twenties. People, people were. And I, I know grew people, up with, not even just with. like opioid. Well, I guess it's opioids too. But like I know people even recently. Like uh, there's recent people that have passed away from like lean, like dirty lean and stuff. That yeah, I, that I know. It's been so much, bro. So, so many people. So we don't. We don't. We're, we're never like looking down on uh, anybody. It's mostly just like fucking. Um, documenting it and like i see like like i said i see some of the people i've loved most in the world could be in that position or have been in that position so it's never like it's more so just like i want I, and uh we'll, we'll we'll get to talk about this uh in a coming video for you but like you've gotten to talk to behind the scenes like you those videos have made a huge impact on even if it's just one person there's there is one person that you'll be talking to yeah I pat <clears throat> i i mean I, I can say this pat from the first kensington video uh, when I went there alone and, and did it, uh, that was released in January of this year. Um, he said that being in that video, he's the one that used Xylazine on camera, right? It was but very yeah, disturbing. You, you asked him not to, and he said he's still going to do it anyways, even if we don't film it or whatever. And then Yeah, it was, it was a disturbing. I felt like I was definitely towing the line of like, fuck, like how much, like am I showing too much? But it was very like raw and like fucked up. And I, I, 
he wanted to show the effects of xylazine and obviously I wanted to show document the reality and, and it was just like a, it was a weird thing it made people uncomfortable a lot of people were upset because I it's real it's it's I'll, a I'll, really raw moment yeah some people were upset because I promoted my Patreon in that video as well but like I promoted it in every video but I get it can be distasteful for sure um that's why I didn't promote it all in the Chicago video and no which I really appreciate you click there's even been people like wanting a Patreon cup but I'm just not going to I'm just whatever but uh so. So Pat actually said that uh, the filming of that video and the release of it uh, helped him uh, spark his sobriety journey. And he's now over a year sober and is thriving and doing well. So I'm going to be um, hopefully uh, doing a follow-up interview with Pat and uh, getting his perspective and stuff. And it's stuff like that, that, that that's beautiful and that we love to see. No, it's so, it's so cool. There's so many things that happen behind the scenes that like we – there's no reason to put it out or talk about it. And like – Yeah, we do – even if I do good shit, it's like – it's a double-edged sword. If I talk about good shit, people are going to say you're doing yeah. it. You, that's the only reason you're doing good stuff is to talk about it or whatever. And there's like, like I, I want, I want to give you props. I know, uh, I don't know what makes. You get frustrated. I was going to say, I get frustrated because people give you a hard time as if you're people not doing more for other people. You than, say some shit right now. No, you do more for other people <laughs> than you do for yourself. Though it's crazy. Like, like I, we're not going to touch too much on it, but you literally saved people's lives in Lebanon. So. Boom! That, like that's enough. No, we, try to, we, we, we try to do a lot of good stuff. And I'm it's not even the well. video, not even the video either. If you think I'm talking about like saving people's lives by showing the, what's going on there, like physically, actually, via money made from you guys supporting, has saved people's lives. Um, so, but yeah, I appreciate all of you guys like freaking even allowing me to be a YouTuber. And definitely, the more money I make, that is, uh, anyone who's in my life can obviously see the where where that's going to. You know what I mean? No, it, everybody benefits when you when you win, we all win, man. That's why I'm such a, a hardcore. Bro, make core. me Ian Ross, bro. You'd be rich as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But start streaming, please. Nah. Uh, but uh... All right. So as we've talked about over and over, you've been here since day one. What is it like for you um, putting so much time on YouTube, making so many videos, being with me, seeing me make so many videos, not really having success for years and years and dozens and dozens of tries. And then finally, we make a video and it gets a million views. Yeah, the Jackson – is it the – which one was my first one that I filmed? I can't remember. Uh, the first one I filmed uh, that got a million was the Weirdest – Wildest Hoods. What is it? Weirdest? Inside the Weirdest Hoods of Milwaukee. Weirdest Hoods of Tommy Milwaukee G. with Tommy G. Yeah, and that one was uh, – it was definitely cool. Like it, it's stuff that I can put on my portfolio and stuff because I do video outside of Brandon and I've tried to, to you know, like make money other ways whenever I can. And it's cool to have something like uh, – like he said, like there's been years and years of even just my own YouTube videos, like just working on stuff – for probably I'd say I've put my 10,000 hours into into video by now and yeah. and like for it to not get seen by it definitely hurts when like you know it's discouraging to stream to one person and to post a video that gets 12 views and one like and you've been there though too oh, and it sucks. so it's because like you, you need people to view your stuff like you don't want to be like desperate or call it chasey or whatever but like Everyone that's putting stuff on the internet is trying the goal to is get to views. to be seen. Yeah, like yeah, that's you want to get views. You and that's how you make it a career. You can't make it a career without getting views. Right, and so, but I found a way to 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 make it a career without getting my own views, which was cool. And thanks to you, so like, you know, I don't have a nine to five or anything. This is what I get to wake up and do every day, which is really cool. And uh, I think just like getting to work on something that finally gets gets a hold of like multiple like obviously that that video in particular it's not like people are commenting wow the camera work on this is amazing so it's not like they, they they're uh immediately yeah it's not like i'm getting praise from it you know what i mean but it's still really cool to see uh that finally something that it's like man i filmed so much stuff and none of it really gets seen like literally everything ever up until that point combined had not reached with that one ad yeah i mean you're, and you're just such a big part of the project you know what i mean in the process and um, like we tried to get you on, on the edits and you got to edit, uh, the Jackson Ward video that hit a million views. What's That's just cool on the resume. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that was like the first time, like I, I had a lot of self doubt and thinking that like your product is really, really good. And then I'm not good enough to, to be a part of the editing process for a long time. And then eventually just shot my shot with you. You would have always let me do it. If I would have said like, Hey, yeah. I want to do it. You would have been like, yeah, sure. Like I well, you like you, some stuff in the past. Yeah. Like here but. and there, but it was just by volunteer. Like, Hey, let me hop on that edit or whatever. Let me get like, I would do the little music video cuts in between like the, yeah. the, but, but you've improved so much and you dialed in and I just wanted to give it a, I was like, you know, I got to just, just 
give it a shot. Because the, the biggest thing you've told me that I can give other people, if you're trying to do video and edit and um, make entertaining stuff or whatever, the biggest thing you've told me that has helped so much is to always question your work. And not in a bad way, not think that you're bad at what you're doing, but question it as in don't be so locked in or so confident in one effect or idea or something that you're doing to where you won't allow other people's input to help you make it better. And a lot of the times in the beginning, I would think that I'm doing it the best way and that I think it's funny. And I think that's why it discouraged me because I would send something to you and you would change it. And then in my mind, I was like, well, I didn't do it right. I didn't do it. Like, why didn't it? Whatever. And it, that's not what it is. It's that... When you get multiple people, you get multiple brains, multiple eyes, everybody starts to work on it or whatever, like it's just going to make it better in the end. And you have to be okay with everything you do on an edit isn't, first of all, it's not going to stay. Most of the, especially when you start editing, everything you do in the beginning is going to be tweaked by the end of the video. But yeah. also just not get too hard stuck on one idea, whether it be a concept for the video a theme or an effect idea or no, like the, if you the artist in us gets like so tied to, to yeah like do. i'll do a transition that i think is so cool and then you'll you'll be like take that out and to me it, there's like that inner struggle of like whatever but learning to let go of what you think is the better idea or the perfect way of doing something in hopes of allowing other people to like it's just going to make it better yeah and i think that that's helped me a lot in editing for you is is because now i've gotten to work on a handful like uh, the Canada video that will be coming out at some point for you. Mm -hmm. I did that. Mm -hmm. And then the, the juggalo one that's coming out, I did that. And then um, hopefully the MGK one I can get started on here and, and get that one done and then keep going. I mean, we got ton. We went through that list the other day. There's a lot. Yeah. We have 73 on the list. There's a lot for me to work on. So again, 73, cause I'm about to have a kid room at the nursery right now. I'll be having a kid very, very soon. Yeah. And um, it's just time to lock in. Yeah. I've been working incredibly hard this year with the, the help of Matt to stack up a ton of videos. So whenever my uh, daughter comes, I can just be focused on being healthy and being there for my daughter and being home and present. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, like out of the I filmed with you literally from January to like July nonstop. And there's only like two. And I mean, nonstop. I mean, going to Canada, coming back for a day, going to New York, coming back for a day, going to Puerto Rico going back for two days, going to Cleveland, coming back. And like, it was nonstop. Yeah. And three videos of that has come out, I think, so I've far. I've lost a lot of weight this year. <laughs> of being emaciated. <laughs> well, you, you've been alcohol-free as well for over a year. Over, Yeah, I'm coming up on two years in March. So March 4th will be my, my two that. years of alcohol-free. Yeah. That's so cool. And you, I've definitely been uh, in your ear. I want I want you to make more content and you know pursue your YouTube thing, as I have been with uh, like everyone that I've worked Anybody with. Anybody we run Always. into. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's one thing I will... I say that I always do is I always try to motivate people to start their own YouTube stuff or post their own content. The the my favorite stat is some of your before this crazy realm we've been on because totally incorrect incorrect stat now but like seven out of your ten million view videos now you have way more than that but for a while there all of your videos were like your biggest ones were done GoPro or iPhone yeah on like low it, it budget did, didn't take equipment didn't take having a professional cameraman it's somebody holding a GoPro pointing at somebody and just trying to tell people that like it's possible you just have to go out and do it yeah you can literally do it you just have to go through a series of steps which is go film content get good at editing it get good at thumbnails and titles and post things consistently and I guarantee it will work and I want Matt to have a, a successful YouTube channel um, so something that uh, I think would be really cool for you to incorporate in your videos is what you've helped me incorporate in mine which is the talking heads matt has helped film some of the the best talking heads like the one of my favorite is the baltimore um the cherry hill baltimore one you let me borrow your waiters yeah and we, uh, went, went, to, in and we went to the water that one was fun and all those Sniper talking filmed. heads those talking heads are like full day excursions so they're really fun like that's where we probably hang out the most like that's when we hang out the most is when we're doing talking heads because uh, it's one minute of the video on camera but the rest of the day we're hiking and yeah like actually like hanging out <laughs> and get, get food before we go and that kind of stuff and then like, yeah but like that shot you got with the sniper lens way up on the rock and me like floating in the water yeah the cherry hill that's like so cool and the one that was really underrated was the puppy girl jenna talking yeah about. i wish that video was received better because i carried two cameras up a mountain we parked like miles away. We carried two cameras, tripods. It took like four hours. It was way too ridiculous. But it's a dual, it's a dual camera angle talking head, which was the first time you had done that. And and the colors and everything and the location and it was when I just got this camera that we're using now, which is like, in my opinion, color wise and all that, significantly better than my previous one. So like, just like the up, I brought everything. I brought the monitor out for that and everything. Like I brought a studio yeah. style setup to the top heads, of a mountain. Those talking heads are really beautiful. 
So I'm, I am hoping, and like I said, I don't just say this on camera, but of course I'll, I'll, I will help you if you need any help with uh, any of the content. But yeah, I'm excited to see, you know, your future uploads. Obviously, freaking thank you so much for helping me become a YouTuber. You know, you, I don't have to tell you. No, I feel I'm like I'm saying this for people watching. You already freaking know. But yeah, no, you're so vocal about. It. I mean, we talk a lot, but, but we're doing the video, so yeah, I really appreciate this this freaking guy. I would not have a YouTube channel if it, if it wasn't for him. That's a fact. Because I don't even know who I could have got someone to film it. Because like you know, you probably filmed like twenty or thirty percent of my videos. Yeah, it was just my, the very beginning, and then recently, everything else in the middle. You but you are trying. the person who's filmed the majority of my videos. My videos are so split up between so many different camera guys. Yeah, I mean, there's like at least a... I mean, but, your, your dad has filmed a video for yeah, you before. It's everybody. Random people have. Anybody under the but sun. <laughs> the 30% of the, the videos that you have filmed, like I... If it wasn't for you believing in me, helping me film those videos uh, and doing all that, especially in the beginning, like, I definitely don't think I would have been a YouTuber. Well, I'm just so happy that you continue to try and bro. And you went, you're the one who took the financial burden of it all and all that. Like, I just gave up my time and... It worked though. I'm so happy it worked. Yeah. I don't have a nine to five, man. I get to I get to do cool shit every day. Yeah, even if it uh, stops now, I'm you know, in my mind, like we did it, and I'm thankful. But yeah, even if it all stopped now, we did it. It worked. But we would like to have stable. Uh, well, let's keep lives. it going. Yeah, yeah. let's. <laughs> we would like to have stable lives and not be like totally uh, screwed because we are not rich by any means. And yeah, no, I'm still not. I'm still paying off the camera that we're uh, shooting on right now. But you know, your car's not sure mine. Whatever that called. one has that one's cool. I have a Nova. Cool it's just a, yeah, but it's no heat, no air conditioning, crank windows, no Fuck power that. steering, no no speedometer. No. <laughs> Moral of the story is, <laughs> we really appreciate you guys watching. It would mean a lot if you could subscribe to Matt's channel, give his future content a chance, give his past content a chance. Some of his past stuff has been about it's football. But commanders, I'm kind of directionless. So if you guys have a great idea, like this, I know you guys came from him, so that's kind of why I wanted to, you know, maybe some, talk about some of the great times we've had together. And I've also wanted to do a video like this for well before this happened. But yeah, and with the timing, like I'm about to have a kid, I'm not about to be filming a bunch. I'll still have you obviously doing editing work, but like I'm not about to be filming for a long. So yeah, hopefully time. I can I can do the content. Well, we're gonna be pumping out some incredible stuff on your channel though. So but yeah, you, you'll be able to help me with edits. But I'm saying like it would be great if you you know produce your own content and oh you know, yeah, no, I would love to support and watch and everything. It would mean a lot to me. Yeah. But uh, I mean, other than that, thank you guys. If you made it this far in the video, that is in, insane. This is probably gonna be like a 40 minute video if I had to take a guess. But or longer. We're trying to get it. We're trying to get his watch time up to be monetized. So yeah. So I hope you don't think that's too big of a cash grab. But if if anybody, uh, We're not getting any money, I was gonna say, if anything, it's just We're trying to get you setting the ability up. to make money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm still new to it all, so I don't know. Thankfully, I have a nice, uh, I have a mentor here that'll help me through the process of. I don't even know how any of it works. So, I gained five thousand subs in a night. You got freaking a bullet fragment in your neck. That's the, that's the. I, w I wish you got five hundred thousand subscribers, man. I wish I could do more. But you did a lot already. So, and like I said, not even for me, it, it's all shit off camera too. That like, I can tell him you got me a four wheeler, right? I you bought it. me a four wheeler by my request, not by some dumb, whatever the fuck. I was like, yo, this is sick. And he was like, do you want it? Yeah, that was just like, and then you sent me, you were on your, your, you were on like a personal non YouTube related relaxation trip. And you just sent me wired me funny. <laughs> Baby moon fiance thing. And he's, no, that's just cherry on top. But yeah, I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to talk too much about. Um, well, I want to do an ATV video at some point. So, yeah. <laughs> so if you guys want to see that, you can see the. It's a dope ass Yamaha 660 Raptor. Yeah, it's badass. Nice. Yeah, that's we appreciate all you guys watching. I love you guys. Thank God we're alive. Sorry for being in a shitty situation and put him out in, in jeopardy. Like I said, we have 73 episodes filmed. So if you guys see in future episodes uh, that we're doing crazy stuff or in crazy situations. That's already been filmed. Uh, moving forward, I would like to, you know, uh, have my priorities aligned, be safer, and be there for my family because I my life matters more than myself now. You know yeah, I mean? and there's there is going to be a lot some stuff like the there's some hood videos coming out still that are definitely uh, seemingly like why are you going back out there? But it's it's already been done. Yeah, been it's, done for a while. Yeah, so, so it's not it's not uh, continuing to test fate. But. Yeah, we're. I mean, we're done. We're done filming for who knows how long, months and months probably. But that doesn't mean that the videos stop. I mean, you've got literally. If you post it every single yeah. week, you have over a year's worth of content mm -hmm. for everybody. Year so. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I know we're going on, but subscribe to Matt, like this video, comment, and uh, if you want to see some stuff from him, 
let him know what because you know he's just starting out his uh you know yeah leave some suggestions guys like i'm willing to do i'll probably still be doing commander stuff on the side for the people that were here before everybody joined in um but if oh. anything like sports in general but then even if you want to see us do something you know what i mean like I'll, yeah, i was gonna I'll say i'd love to even go fuck around and like you know, uh brandon should do i've or... never wrestled in my life so i wish could be, that could was, be interesting i wish that freaking pawpaw was uh, was in good health and everything man and around i miss pawpaw because a, a pawpaw fishing episode would be fire i've been asked how long have i asked you to do that from the jump bro we were gonna do it for my channel but that'll be so fire to do it for your i channel. would do it for my channel i've been asking for a pawpaw that's, fishing that's video beautiful about youtube it gets captured these memories um uh, that's where it cuts, guys. Unfortunately, I know this is a jank ending to the video, but it's an hour long. If you guys made it this far, that's incredible. Um, my camera died. We didn't expect to go that long, uh, but this is editor Matt <laughs> here. Uh, just here to thank you guys. And uh, yeah, please check out the rest of the channel. And uh, thank you for doing your part in helping me become a YouTuber. Uh, hopefully there's some good content to be had in the future. Please stick around and... Um, yeah, that's pretty much all we talked about in the video. Anyways, I don't think we covered anything else, so I'll leave it there. Thanks again. See you guys in the next one. Peace.